Hello. Computers and digital technologies have long become an integral and important part of our lives. So important that serious battles between different people flare up on these platforms. And we're not talking about disputes in the comments. Genius computer geeks don't always take the good side of being hackers. The least harmless thing they can do is hack your mail or page on social media. Sometimes their prank goes so far that they can become a threat to national security and the FBI starts looking for them. In our video, we'll go through the most wanted hackers in modern history. Let's go! Hector Monsangar, another member of the anonymous community. I think we can call him a hacker from birth because he started doing this from a young age. Hector was raised by his grandmother. They did not live in the most thriving quarter of New York and one day, deciding to take part in the family's financial expenses with the help of his hacking skills, they stole credit card data. This made it possible to pay the necessary bills and live better than before. When he joined Anonymous, Hector was given a much more serious assignment. For example, he hacked into the website of the Prime Minister of Tunisia, where he posted a letter in support of protesters against the local government. After that, Hector felt somewhat like Robin Hood, who could help hundreds of people at once without leaving his apartment. The hacker's widespread activity ended the moment when he brazenly infiltrated one of the FBI's branches website. The very next day, several agents were sitting in his house. For all the tricks of the vector, let's start counting more than a thousand different hacks. Just imagine 124 years in prison. It is simply unrealistic to come to the terms with such a figure in your head, and even more so to put it into practice. To avoid punishment, Hector had to become an informant and work for the FBI. In three years of cooperation with them, the hacker helped prevent more than 300 cyber attacks on the US government, the American military and NASA. Perhaps if Hector's childhood had gone differently, his life would have been completely different. And he would not have been a former criminal collaborating with the FBI, but one of the coolest specialists in Silicon Valley. But that's another story. Marcus Hutchkins The man who saved the internet. That title can be given to Marcus Hutchkins, a young and promising hacker who remained unconvicted for a long time for his work. By some wicked irony of fate, he was detained after he prevented an attack on the global network from a virus that would have destroyed the data of thousands of users. For such an operation, you really need to have an inborn talent, don't you think? He and his parents realized at an early age that Marcus had a great future with computer systems. Computer courses did not give the boy what he wanted. Marcus was often bored and he continued to study on his own. Moreover, they were not allowed to play his favorite Counter-Strike and Call of Duty, which is unfair to the child. Perhaps his hacking path was revenge on his boring teachers. At the age of 13, Marcus was presented with his first computer, which he disassembled and reassembled, replacing the components he needed. A year after, he created the first program to steal passwords from Internet users, revealing where Internet Explorer stores encryption keys. After two years, he forgot about school. After three, he began to find large customers on the dark net. Hodgkin's business took off. He soon became one of the main developers of programs for theft of banking data of thousands of people. After his arrest, he confessed to his crimes. The trial lasted several years and Marcus was already mentally preparing himself for prison life. But in his case, a truly unexpected turn took place. The judge fully acquitted the hacker, saying that saving the world from a virus destroying everything in its path outweighed the crimes that the hacker had committed before. Eric Taylor Another child prodigy who in his midst received the nickname Cosmo the God and began his hacking career at the age of 12. As Eric himself says, in this type of activity he was never attracted to the money that could be earned there, but was only interested in the process. For him, as a growing boy, it was one continuous adventure that brought him a lot of pleasure. Finding like-minded people on the network, Taylor, together with his hacking buddies, launched attacks on sites like Amazon, Apple and Netflix, obtaining user data. An impressive track record, wouldn't you say? Cosmo the God tried to dump their crimes on Russian hackers, but failed. After their arrest, Taylor, as they say, switched to the bright side of the force and now works as an advisor in cybersecurity systems, protecting various companies from hacker raids. Martin Shkreli Known in America under the pseudonym Farmer Boy, Martin Shkreli founded his own pharmaceutical company, which almost ruined the bias of vital drugs. For example, his company raised the cost of an HIV drug by over 5,000%. 
An incredible scam that requires a great person of great arrogance. At the same time, Shkreli managed to deceive his investors, telling them tales about how he managed two large monetary funds, where businessmen made huge financial investments. The cases of Shkreli's fraud were revealed, and the hapless businessman himself received seven years in prison, with the arrest of all tax assets and property. Surprisingly, he was the owner of a single copy of one of the records of the rap group Wu-Tang Clan as well as a rare painting by Picasso. Commander X Today, this man whose name is Christopher Doyen has more than 7,000 followers on Twitter. Despite the fact that he has been on the run from the US authorities for several years, he probably should have stayed anonymous. But Doyen is as reckless as his position in the global hacking community. Incredibly, he not only manages to stay in touch with his fans, but even laughs openly at whoever catches him. Even more interesting, Commander X released a book several years ago in which he spoke about his activities in the largest hacker group, Anonymous, where he quickly rose from an ordinary hacker to the leader. I agree, it's not very smart to write such insightful information about FBI's most wanted organizations. However, given the fact that after his escape from America, Commander X gave interviews from left to right. The book is unlikely to aggravate the situation. One of the first major cases of Commander X on the Anonymous team was the hacking of Santa Cruz City government website. It was something like a protest against the government's policy towards the homeless population. And although Doyen himself believes that this was humorous, this act put him in prison for 15 years. His most unimaginable work, showing the character and beliefs of the hacker, was hacking and collecting data from all the inhabitants of Egypt when there were protests. The main goal of Anonymous was a psychological attack on the Egyptian government. And in order to achieve this, he had to work in strange conditions. During the day, Doyen worked on a project in a coffee shop in San Francisco. And at night, he slept with his computer in the alley behind it, continuing to collect data. He escaped from the United States when the court released him on bail. Sounds like a spy thriller, right? Earlier, Commander X designed an underground railroad to the border of Canada so that in a situation like that, he and his members could elude the authorities. As a result, I had to use my own hypothesis. Kevin Mitnick one of the oldest and most famous former hackers in the world. He was already a teenager when the computer era was starting to gain momentum. Various companies were actively going through the digitization process. Mitnick constantly attacked large firms of that time. IBM, Motorola and Nokia suffered at his hands. By 1985, he had become the world's most wanted hacker. The hunt for him had been going on for several years. Mitnick, unlike our other heroes today, still had to spend time in prison. After being released, the hacker retrained and decided to play for the good side, becoming a private advisor on cybersecurity. However, such a role did not fully satisfy his ambitions. Therefore, today his figure is not entirely unambiguous. He registered a firm that sells hacking tools to government corporations. Mitnick himself guarantees the complete exclusivity and safety of his product for buyers whose names he did not disclose. A controversial issue on the part of ethics. On the one hand, this can help reduce the threat from various unreliable security-threatening groups. On the other hand, who knows right now, the government can easily enter your computer unnoticed to check the latest downloads from pirated sites. How you feel about that is up to you.